Hello there, welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Today I'll be showing you how I make this sort of faux wrap style skirt. You've seen a few of these here on my channel before. I have one in red plaid. I have a black moiré version that I made for the Blade Runner lookbook earlier this year. And then I also recently used the same pattern with a stripe, which turned out quite fun. So I've used this pattern several times before and I've had a lot of requests for this skirt style. So I thought today I would go ahead and dive in and show you all how I make a pattern like this one and then how I make the skirt as well. So let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom as always and get started. And so we begin with my basic block skirt pattern, basically my pencil skirt pattern. You've seen me make this here on the channel here before or make one of these, so I will link up to that in a card here. Basically, this is just the part of the basic block dress foundation like a fitting shell sort of situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace the front twice. So I'm tracing, here it is in the half form that I normally use it in, but I'm gonna trace a full front today. So along the center front here, I will mirror it. So this is the back of that same pattern. It's just purple poster board on the back and blue on the front, but I'm just tracing it again in mirror. So I have a full front here and I will add the darts on as well trying to use marker when doing these kind of overhead things so you can see what I'm doing. But basically this is my full front of my basic block skirt pattern, the pencil skirt pattern that I use all the time. Now on this here, the right hand side is where I'm gonna be doing all this additional adding of fullness and sort of the faux wrap situation. So I'm gonna draw lines, I'm gonna square lines down from the darts to the hem and then slice up those lines through the darts so I can close these darts along the waist here because I'm gonna eliminate the darts on this side of the skirt. So to do so, I just layer the dart closed up here and tape it shut, which opens up a long wedge of fullness here into the hem of the skirt. This is how you create an A-line skirt pattern, for those wondering. Um, if you just did this, then you now have an A-line skirt on the right-hand side, and we have the pencil skirt on the left-hand side. I'm going to take off this extra paper over here and use it to fill in those big wedges of fullness I just added. Basically giant darts, but we're going to use them just as flare here, because we're adding a lot of fullness and flare and drapery going on in this side of the skirt. So I have a line over here and pencil skirt over there. Now you could take a curved ruler like this, a hip curve ruler, but I'm just gonna draw on my big curves across the front and sketch them on in pencil. So you could use a curved ruler if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna draw these on. Now the big thing here is to start one up kind of on the hip level area. It's only about a few inches down from the waistline up there on the right hand side and then curve it down. And you wanna have at least like probably six to 10 inches of difference between the line on one side and on the other. So they're asymmetric across the front like this. I drew the first two about six inches apart and then I drew another one in the center there. And then down here on this right hand side, I wanna create a little bit of a flare from about the knee sort of level out. So I'm just drawing a little bit of a flare from uh, like about three, four inches down from the last pleat. You just want to make sure that that side seam line remains the same distance uh, as the other side so it will still match up with your back pattern. Here I'm going to go over these lines with blue marker here that I drew um, just so you can see them a little bit better and then I will slice into those and create pleats out of these curves. So then we will have these curved drapes across the front of the skirt. Again, it kind of creates like a faux wrap situation. Um, I don't really ever, it, it takes more fabric to make an actual wrap skirt. So this is one way of making a similar style without having to have two fronts in some ways. So I'll just cut off my excess here. And again, I'm just cutting through those curved lines just to the next edge, but not all the way through so that they, these areas hinge open, just like I do when I slash and spread darts. Just taping down anything anywhere where the paper is flipping up on me getting in the way but basically across the skirt now i have these hinged openings i can go ahead and hinge them open uh, you want to add at least a couple inches of fullness between each of these but you can get quite dramatic with it as well i'm going to add about anywhere from four to six inches in between these and i don't have to be very exact about this or you don't have to be if you're doing it as well um you know the difference between six inches and six and a quarter it's not going to make that huge of a difference so i just kind of open these up by eye here, make these large curved pleats. So you can see, since I didn't cut through all the way on the other side, these are, I can hinge them open and close and make decisions. I am taping scraps of paper together here to try and conserve on paper. Recycle bits that have been cut off of other patterns before, tape them back together and use them for things like this. I do have a link to this alphanumeric paper on a roll that I use for my pattern drafting in the description below. Not sponsored, but um, I've just been using this paper ever since I went to fashion school, which is where which is where I learned to use it. Um, but I like to use the opposite side of this, so it has numbers and letters and a grid on one side, and the other side is blank. I try and use the blank side to fill in spaces, so you can kind of see the history of modification by doing that, so that the paper doesn't have any markings on these sections that I've opened up and added flair to just helps visually kind of explain what happened here. 
in case I ever need to go back and I'm wondering, what the heck did I do here? Which does happen to me, let's be honest. So now that one side of the skirt looks very strange, seeing as it was straight before, and you can straighten that off, I'll show you that later. I'm gonna cut off this excess from above the waistline up here, just so it's not as visually confusing. But over here we have our pleats added in now, and we need to pleat them upwards so I can get the correct shape along the side here. If you've seen me do this with darts before sometimes, so I'm just gonna close that shape how it will be sewn eventually, and then cut off the excess while it's folded. Folding the paper in this curve kind of thing is not necessarily easy or fun, as you can see here, but it is worth it to get the correct shape along here. Cut off a little bit of extra to make it possible. Fold that up into place, like so. It's not the most fun part of this. And then cut that off so I have the correct shape inside the interior of this pleat, basically. And again, this skirt here that I'm making today has these three pleats across. Uh, the other skirts I was showing you at the beginning, the plaid and the moiré ones, they're using my old pattern. Obviously, I'm making a new pattern here today, um, but my old pattern only had two across the front. So you can add, you know, as many or as few as you want, really. So this was the original pencil skirt pattern, and now it looks like this very strangely shaped pattern. And of course, you'll need to cut one of these because you just need one front, and this is now a full front. At the back, I'm just going to tape down some of the excess papery bits because they're flipping up and getting caught on things and being annoying. Um, but yeah, you can see I'm just using scraps of paper to fill in a lot of this sort of stuff, and that is the front of the pattern. Now for the back of the pattern, I'm just going to use my basic block skirt back, my pencil skirt back, just use a tracing of that so it's the same as any other time I've made a pencil skirt. I don't do any modifications to the back. Now, if you want to make a couple modifications on this, um, I actually ended up using this pattern as is for the skirt that I made today, just for a little bit of variation, but if you wanted to make it more like the pencil skirt styles I showed in the beginning, you are going to want to straighten off this side again. So this extra bit of flare here created by the opening up of the pleats on the other side, you can eliminate it because you've added so much ease into the front of the skirt. You don't technically need this extra flare, so you can just straighten off using like uh, the original pencil skirt as a guide straighten off that side so that it's back into its original pencil skirt shape. My pattern here is actually 27 inches and I make my skirts 29 inches long, so I do need to come down a little bit further. And then I can just curve that into the rest of this hem. So I'll cut off that excess that was created by the pattern being manipulated on the other side, because I want to keep this side quite straight. This is how I made that plaid version of this. I'll show you again. This is I'm doing the modification to make it look like this, because today's skirt that I'll be making out of an iridescent linen, which is very fun, will look a little bit different. So I'm just blending that edge back into the hem again, so it's the correct length at the side seam where it will be need to sewn onto the back, um, which of course is only a certain length. And weirdly enough, you know, this side of the pencil skirt is very much a pencil skirt and will match the back pattern perfectly. This side, um, once you do pleat it up, is the same length, it just looks very strange and long right now because of those pleats. And over here, I'm going to extend this flare a little bit too, because on my other two skirts, the plaid and the moiré, I do have a bit of a larger flare over here. You don't need as much room like this if you have a very flowy fabric, because it will fall naturally into a sort of fluttery situation. But in a stiffer fabric like the one I ended up using today, this area could have used a little bit more flare, so that is what I'm showing how to do here. You can flare this out to 90 degrees if you want to. So again, here's that original pencil skirt pattern. You can see it fits quite well on that one side, but over here on the right, I have all this pleating and flare going on, but I did use the original like sort of extra flare version for my skirt that I make today. So here's that original pattern with that side flare on both the right and the left, laying out on my iridescent linen here, ready to be cut out. Of course, I needed to cut two of the back, one for each side, and then just one of the front. Here I am marking the pleats where they start and end on the front of my skirt. Actually, this is not marked on the inside. This is marked on the outside here with a colored pencil real fast. And then I will, of course, need to punch holes in my pattern to be able to mark my darts. Those are marked on the, uh, the pleats are marked on the front, the darts are marked on the back as usual. And of course, I only have darts on the one side of the skirt here. It really is a kind of Frankenstein skirt where one side is a pencil skirt and the other side is a, who knows, a funny, draped, flared, floofy, strange skirt. <laughs> but this side still has its darts, so I'm just going to mark those in with some tailor's chalk here, and then I can pin them shut, ready to go over to the machine. Now, this fabric does like to fray quite a lot, so I do like to sew my darts quickly and then go ahead and surge everything. So you'll see I do that next. But here I'm taking my pattern piece off of my back, skirt backs here. Again, I will need to mark my darts on here as well because all the darts in the back stay the same as the standard pencil skirt always is. But this is a metallic blend linen from uh, Robert Kaufman Fabrics. This I picked up on fabric.com, I think, which I don't shop with them anymore because I found out they are owned by Amazon, so I try not to shop with them if I can help it, um, especially because you can find Robert Kaufman fabrics from smaller, more like independent fabric shops and also on Etsy and things like that. So, um, But this is their Essex Linen with the metallic, and it comes in several different colors. This is the iridescent, 
emerald green color. I forget what it's called. I will put the name on the screen now because I've forgotten. And here also, just after I marked and pinned all those darts, I'm going to cut a waistband from the extra fabric here. So I'm just cutting the selvage off because it is a you know, very different color than the rest of the fabric here. But then along the straight grain here, I'm going to cut a piece three inches wide to serve as my waistband for this skirt. And I'm just cutting it long enough, like probably like 40 inches long, even though my waistband will eventually be like 31 inches long for my waist, but I'm just cutting a long strip to use for now, and I will set that aside. Over here on the machine, I can go ahead and start sewing my darts, like I said. So just go ahead and start at the large end of the dart and sew off the end of it, and then tie the end shut, like I always do here. For any of you who've been around here for a while, you've seen me tie many a dart, there's a lot of darts in my sewing, that's for sure. Just here on the Singer 99K again today. I really do need to become uh, <laughs> comfortable and friendly with my other newer machine here. I just haven't had to use it because I uh, have fallen in love with this 99K and it does look quite good on camera too, doesn't it? So to bring out a big hulking white machine would seem less aesthetically pleasing somehow. But of course the other machine I have in here is a modern Burnett that I have not um, spent very much time with since getting it because I was bought, I bought the Singer thinking, oh, you know, it'll be a pretty in the background even if it doesn't work because it was only like $75 for this machine. And I thought it would be like a nice decorative accent even if I couldn't get it in working order, but in, fi in fact it works perfectly well and I love it. So I haven't had to use the... I bought the modern machine to be my new machine and the Singer to be like my sort of one-off novelty machine except for that it's a workhorse and I have no reason to not use it, honestly. Over here I can just go ahead and press my darts towards the center back here on this back piece. Again, you can see this fabric is quite fabulous. It's very sparkly. It's like a night sky. And then here on the front I can press my darts towards the center front as well, and then just give this a bit of a quick press, just because being linen this fabric is quite a wrinkly monster, or it wants to be at least. Just go ahead and give that a quick press, and then I'll take everything over to the serger and go ahead and just serge all the raw edges to protect them from fraying. With my darts all sewn and pressed and edges surged, I can go ahead and pleat up this side here. So I have those markings from earlier. Again, just mark those in color pencil on the front here. I'm just going to take the bottom one, position it back up on the top. Of course, this is much easier to pleat now in fabric than it was earlier when I was trying to do this in paper to get the correct shape. Go ahead and pin that pleat into place. And then I will do the same for the next one up. Take that bottom marking, line it up with the top, and pin into place. You could baste over this whole area once you have it pinned, um, but I am actually just going to line up my other piece on top of it and sew it all at once, just because I can, honestly. All right, so that's that side all pinned up, so you can start to see what this is going to do to the front of our skirt here. And you can see how this is actually short. <laughs> it looked so long and out of shape before, but it actually will match up with the back of the pencil skirt pattern. No problem, so I'll pin this along here, and then pin that along the flare, and we'll just have a little bit of extra flare down there, sort of above the, or from the knee down basically, along the side seam of the skirt. So we didn't change anything about the back, we just changed the front of this pattern, and that will give us a new shape, you'll see in the end, when I have this skirt on. It doesn't look very much like a pencil skirt anymore, that's for sure. Or at least not a standard pencil skirt. Now the back pattern of this is cut along the straight grain, but the front while the top of it is cut along the straight grain, these little side flares and weird bits start to get out of shape and onto bias. So the flare from the front here is a little bit bigger than the back, but only because of the loose weave of the fabric and the fact that it's on bias. So I am making it fit back down, and with steam it will all work out in the end, but it's just the loose weave of this fabric wanting to make it stretch on the bias a little bit more than it should, so I just made it fit because it should and it shall fit. Now my side seam on that side is pinned. This side, even easier. It's curved a little bit, but should be no problem wrangling it in there. So just right sides together again. I'm pinning the top and the bottom first and then kind of making sure everything fits in between again, just because again, that front does have that slight flare on it and therefore is not perfectly on grain like the back is. But just pinning along that curve as well. You could flare this side even more if you wanted to, by the way. You can always add flare onto skirts. Although the easiest way to do so is, again, to just close those darts at the top to create an A-line skirt, but you can flare further than that if you want to, too. And eventually, you flare so far that you've created a circle skirt. So, you know, 
one can only flare so far until you get into circle skirt territory, and then if you have to go beyond that, then, you know, that's serious business. It's a lot of fabric. Over here on the machine, I can go ahead and just sew those two side seams that I just pinned. This is a nice little bit of a reprieve from all the historical sewing I've been doing lately. This is, you know, a one day project. I think I hemmed it the next day, I can't remember. Um, so I finished this in about maybe six hours, perhaps, to make this whole skirt start to finish, which is a big difference than working on all that Victorian stuff I've been doing lately because that takes a lot more time per piece, but I'm much more used to this kind of like retro sewing or sewing, you know, kind of normal clothing, quote unquote, normal clothing, if you can call an iridescent draped pencil skirt normal clothing. Not many people wear pencil skirts anymore even, let alone iridescent ones, unfortunately. Especially here in 2020, I mean to say, because, you know, of course we all are in loungewear most of the time, aren't we? But we have to do what we have to do to get through this year, honestly. Especially just chilling at home. But this fabric does look fabulous under this colorful lighting and here on camera. It's very fun. I should do more projects out of such visually interesting things. I use so much black in my sewing that just isn't always the best on camera, but it is what I wear the most. Who are we kidding? But at least today it's glittery black. So the other side over all uh, this pinned area with all my pleats in, just take my pins out as I go, especially when I'm using these large pins. You know I sew over my pins normally, but only when I'm using ultra fine ones. These regular standard sewing pins I don't like to sew over anymore on this nicer machine. And by nicer I mean elderly. <laughs> it's really just a vintage machine, and therefore I feel it deserves to not have to sew over these large pins anymore. But I just sewed over the uh, pleats and everything too, and noticed, hey, my bobbin ran out halfway through that seam. So classic, you get to the end and you're like, oh cool, I sewed over. Oh no, I didn't sew anything because my bobbin ran out without me realizing. So here I am winding a new bobbin on the bobbin winder on this 99K. And I can go ahead and thread this machine back up and go ahead and sew over that whole area of the bottom of the side seam again, because nothing actually happened the last round. Oh well, what are you gonna do? All right, trying this again now that there's, you know, thread in the machine, what a wild idea. I am just gonna sew over the whole side seam again because I would like to put an additional line of stitching over this pleated area for strength anyway. So I'm starting here at the top and sewing all the way down that side seam again, now that I have actual thread in the machine. Then I, of course, can go ahead and press open my side seams that I just sewed. Also, I would like to apologize. It seems the heater has come on down here, so if you can hear that in the background. Some of you with nice headphones, perhaps, can hear the heater come on in the background, but it is now November, and it has been snowing here in Colorado this week. So it's very chilly down here in the basement where I'm recording, so I don't really mind the heater being on, honestly. But here I am just pressing up my seams using the aid of my Taylor's ham for the curved portion at the top, a little bit there. And then I can go ahead and put a zipper into the center back of the skirt. I'm just going to use this little green zipper here. I probably would have used a black if I had one, but I didn't have a skirt length black zipper around and I didn't want to sacrifice a long dress weight one or dress length one for this. Have to cut it down. So I just used this green one. I figured it would be good enough. The lapped zipper that I use covers it pretty well. I am just going to put a double pin at the end of that zipper in so I know how long it is. I will baste from there up to the waist and then for the rest of the seam I will sew as normal, like with a normal stitch length, basically. So I'm going to use a large stitch length above this and then a small one below those double pins. And I do have a wider seam allowance down the back here. You can see I accidentally sewed over some pins there. Oops, got ahead of myself. But over these double pins here, I will stop, come off the machine and switch to a smaller stitch length and sew the rest of the seam as normal. But again, I have like a one inch seam allowance down the center back of my pencil skirt pattern. It's just drafted with a larger bit of space back there in case I need to fold it over and do slits in the back. Of course, I am sewing all the way down to the hem on this one. I'm not leaving a back slit in this because we have that extra fullness and flare in the front. I won't need a slit in the skirt in order to walk. So alas, I shan't include one. All right, back stitch at the end there, come off the machine, and then I can go ahead and give that back seam I just put in, the center back seam, a good pressing here. So I, that's the reason I base the top of this for where the zipper will go in. It's because I want to press it nice and flat and then I will take the stitching from the top of this area out. So that's what I'm about to do here. Actually, this cools down a little bit here. Again, you can see I still don't have a clapper. I'm using my hands. But up here I'm going to take the basting stitches that I put in out. But now I have this area perfectly pressed and ready to go for the zipper. Um, and I just like to have it all in line with the back seam like that. Just, I think it creates a smoother situation back here. All right, so I can slip my zipper in here and on this 
right hand side, I can go ahead and just pin that folded edge right next to the zipper teeth and I will sew it right next to the zipper teeth as well. Over here on the machine, I am switching over to a zipper foot in order to do so and stitch real close to those zipper teeth there. Of course, I can't move the needle or like position on this machine, but I can move this presser foot, around, presser foot around. So you can see me doing that here, aligning it up so that I can have that presser foot right along the edge of the zipper teeth and stitch quite closely. So I'm starting down here at the end where it transitions into a seam, stitching, back stitching a little bit, and then stitching all the way along, stitching this side of the skirt opening kind of down to the zipper. Here at the top, I'm just going to leave the needle down, but raise the presser foot so I can move the uh, like end of the zipper out of my way. And then I will put the presser foot back down and stitch the rest of that. And then here, now that one side of my zipper is all sewn down, I can go ahead and lap this other edge down, lap the left hand side just over the zipper teeth here. I'm just pinning this into place with again, some ultra fine, like sort of silk pins that if I end up sewing over them, I won't care. Um, I bend these pins very easily. It doesn't bother me, you know? We all must do what works best for us. But now I can go ahead and stitch down this other side too. So I moved the presser foot back over to the other side here. And I will go ahead and ride that presser foot along the edge of the zipper teeth underneath here. I can kind of feel where the ridge of the zipper teeth is. And I will sew down this other side. If you'd like to see this maybe in a little bit more detail or me explain this again, perhaps just, you know, repetition helps people learn. At least it does for me. Um, I show how to do this in my pencil skirt video as well. So I will put a card up to that here now too. Now that my zipper is all in and finished, I can go ahead and start working on other things like the waistband. So I'm going to go ahead and take that waistband I cut earlier from a straight length of the fabric, give that a quick little press, and then cut some interfacing to match for it. I'm just going to lay that interfacing on top of here and cut out a piece to fit, basically, and then iron that down. This is fusible interfacing, just some lightweight fusible I have laying around. You can stiffen your waistband any way you prefer. Some people like to put in a ribbon in here or a twill tape. I'm just going to go ahead and stiffen this linen and use it as is. I did go ahead and serge around the edges of that waistband as well after I had ironed the interfacing down. Now I'm just pinning the center of the skirt front to the center of the waistband, right sides together, and then pinning in between that as well, just pinning everything onto the waistband essentially. I like to take my waistbands, mark the center of them, and then mark either side of that 15 inches so I know where my 30 inch like waist is, and then I just pin each side to that marking, and then I'll pin everything in between. And if things are a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, I can kind of zhuzh them or finesse them into the correct size. Sometimes fabric stretches a little bit. You can avoid this by doing more stay stitching and such, but I tend to avoid things like that. But here I am just sewing the skirt down onto the waistband. can go ahead and press the top half inch of this waistband down so that I can curl it down on itself to cover up that seam. So I'm just pressing half inch along the top there. Then I can, on this side for example, I can cut off a little bit more extra and fold the whole thing down just to finish smooth on this side, like so. And I will just hand stitch that all down and then I'll fold that folded edge, fold that folded edge, whatever, fold the folded edge down over my seam right next to it and I can go ahead and slip stitch this down on the inside. You could fell this if you wanted to. I tend to slip stitch them. I've never had one come undone on me, or at least not yet, so that is my process. I'll just pin this down over that seam allowance, over that raw edge on the inside here, and then hand stitch this all to finish. Over here in my hand sewing station here, I'm just whipping the end of this together because in this black linen, you're not going to be able to see these stitches anyway. So 
I decided to not care, you could slip stitch this for a finer finish, but again, I'm just whipping it shut down here along the edge because it really can't be seen, honestly. And then I will slip stitch the waistband down by taking a like stitch up into the fold of the waistband and then a small stitch down into the seam allowance of the seam down there. So none of the stitches show on the outside of the skirt. Um, although in this fabric, they wouldn't show anyway, but let's say you're working with a nice smooth sateen or something, you wouldn't want your stitches to show on the other side. But in this kind of textured linen, a stitch is lost immediately, basically. But I'm stitching up into the waistband and then down into the seam allowance, um, a longer stitch up into the waistband and a short stitch into the seam allowance as I go along. And then to go ahead and finish the skirt, I just need to hem it. So I'm gonna take some bias binding here, or double fold bias binding, basically. And, and I just made this out of some black cotton wall that I keep around here in the stash for lots of different things these days. But um, it's a nice lightweight cotton, so it's not gonna add too much bulk down here at the hem or too much weight. Um, a little weight sometimes at the hem is nice, actually, because it helps it hang a little bit better, helps it flow a little bit better, but this is quite lightweight finish down here. I'm just gonna sew that down. This is along the outside edge, right sides together of the skirt here. And then I will turn everything onto the inside once I have it sewn on. So with that bias sewn on, I can turn everything up inside the edge and press that into place. This is the easiest way I found to hem curved edges and something like this that has a little bit of flare going on at the side seams turns into having a bit of a curve you can see here. And that is just easily managed with a bias tape as opposed to having to turn it twice or anything like that. It's just a little bit harder on a curved edge. So I always just prefer doing a bias hem facing. I use them on nearly every skirt I make, unless it's a super straight cut pencil skirt, then I will just hem it. But most of the time you see me hemming things with bias and I'm just tucking the ends in on themselves here so that everything is nice and smooth on the inside. And again, just hemming that by taking a stitch up into the fold of the bias, a small stitch into the fabric of the skirt, a longer stitch up into the bias fold, and a small stitch into the skirt itself. Just going along to finish the hem. And here is my finished iridescent linen version of this skirt. I do have a top that matches this exact fabric as well. So here it is with that matching top. So it looks a little bit more like a dress. This is rather an epic ensemble because this fabric is kind of a lot and this big poofy sleeve with this much detail going on with the skirt is kind of maybe a bit much. You can let me know what you think of this pairing in the comments below. But of course this will work with most black tops, my black suit jackets, and then also my iridescent wrap top that I also made for the Blade Runner lookbook earlier in the year. For those of you who haven't seen that, I will put a card up to that lookbook here now because I had so much fun doing the outfits and making the clothes for that particular lookbook. It's a style I really like, the mixture of science fiction sort of inspired style and vintage style. I quite like that collision and mix, so that was a very fun lookbook for me to put together. I hope you all enjoyed this project today. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, or if you have any suggestions for other things you'd like to see me pattern draft or make, feel free to leave those for me in the comments as well as always. Thank you for watching today, and I will be back here next week with more sewing and vintage fashion. Bye.